Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, welcome to my stream and episode 3, working on Dominic's 1970 Charger from the Fast and Furious movie part 1. I'll load the intro and let's go. Well guys, we are going to finish our little engine today. Um, you guys saw last time everything I got done. I have done nothing to it since last time. But I have got some stuff prepared. Okay. Today we're going to put on the exhaust manifolds, we're going to put on the fan belts and the fan. So I've gone ahead and chromed up our pulleys in preparation for all this and while I was at it I chromed up the roll cage that's going to go inside the interior of the car too. So I'll change the camera and we'll get to it shall we? Let's change it here. Here we go. Alright. So uh, just to warn you guys I've got about 20 minutes and then I've got to run off because I've got my dinner in the oven and I've got to pull it out in 20 minutes. So anyway we've done all this. We've got our block assembly all done. We've got the blower in assembled and installed. Next is the exhaust manifolds, also known as headers. Okay, so let's get. I've gone ahead and I've painted them while they were on the on the runner or the tree or sprue, whatever you want to call it. Airplanes are taking off early today. After that we're going to put some pulleys on, so I might as well get the pulley off of the sprue while I'm at it. I am going to have to touch up the black on the pulleys, so, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Okay, one thing I did want to do is I wanted to drill out the end of the, the header pipe because that's just a solid block and I'm sorry that's not realistic. So. I want to get my knife and kind of do a little pilot hole as close to center as I can. Right about there. And just do that a little bit. Okay. And I'll do the same on this one. As close to center as I can. And now I'm going to drill a bit. I'll start off small. And we're not going for depth, we just need something, something a little better than no hole at all. And I can tell I'm off center, but that doesn't really matter so much. I can, I can work with that. It's something to work with. This one's a little closer to center. Okay, now I'm going to step up to a bigger bit. Do I want to go maximum? Maximum is not going to give me any room to for error. So I don't want to really use this bit. Okay. I do want to go something bigger. Maybe this one. This will actually give a hole and leave a little room for error since I'm not quite centered on there um, but yet it's still going to be a hole and yeah and yeah give that bit of an illusion of it actually being a pipe that's a bit better I'd rather have an actual hole in there. You can go as deep as you want if you really want to get... As long as you're going straight and you're not going off kilter, you can drill this thing out as deep as you want. I think that's deep enough, just like that. Good enough. And now we'll see how badly off-center I am with this one. Yeah. 
yeah, I'm not bad. So because I'm off center, I can go a little bit like this and get myself kind of a little bit more centered with the path that the bit is going to take. Now if you really wanted to do this quickly, you could actually put the, the bit in a drill. And you could go slow with the drill, but of course slow with a drill is still twice as fast as with your hand. It's really up to you. If you feel confident enough to, to use a drill, then go ahead. Now, because the bit is small, we still have a lot of plastic around the edge. So one thing you can do to give it an illusion of being wide is just kind of carve that edge a little bit with your blade to get closer to the edge to make it a thinner thinner wall just at the tip right so when you paint this thing black because it's going to be black you're not really going to see that your hole really isn't that If I'm correct, these are basically a, would be the equivalent of a five-inch collector um, on the real car. I could be wrong. I don't know. Okay, let's clean up our little nubs on here. I actually want to scrape some of this paint away. Give it a little bit of a better chance to grip onto the side of the head. Okay. I cleaned up my nubs much better on this one. Or should I say it came off the sprue much cleaner. Do a little scraping here, clean off our primer. Let that glue give immediate chance to start working when we get on there. Okay, so let's grab one of these and do a test fit. We've got a couple of little notches that are going to go. Oh, I just broke off this. Okay, we'll worry about that later. It's going to go right there, just like that. That looks pretty good. I feel confident with that test fit. flush on there. Just kind of hold it for a moment. There we go. So there's one. I want to make sure that is flush on there, so I'm just going to press with my knife. Good. That's one. Do the same with this guy. I'm confident from the other side that I don't have to test fit this side. <clears throat> I'm feeling, co feeling confident on it. <laughs> and this one just kind of sat into place and doesn't want to move. But I know it's not flush, so...
she went into place almost right away perfectly so that's good where are you going <clears throat> okay so of course the trick now is kind of having this sit up on its own I'm just gonna put it over here in between a couple of tires and kind of let it rest there there we go okay stay there you're fine because now we're gonna deal with I'm gonna put this aside I'm gonna deal with our fan belts okay and I'm gonna try not to touch the chrome and I want to touch up on the nubs I need to do a little bit of painting The Molotov Chrome really does look like chrome, but it is fragile in that you can rub it off with your hand if you're not careful. And when you do do that, it basically just turns it silver, right? So if you don't really care about it being super chrome, then that's fine. But if you're trying to really preserve that chrome polished look, then you got to do the Molotow in such a way that you basically don't touch it ever. So here's our other fan belt. There are two sets of belts that go on this car. So we've got these ones too. And then we've got an alternator and the actual fan itself. But let's deal with our nubs on this one. Now I knew ahead of time that I was going to have to touch up the black and so I didn't really, I wasn't all that careful with my painting of the chrome on the pulleys because I knew I was going to have to come back later with the black. Okay, so Let's do this first. Number 41, which is this guy, he goes on first. And it looks like he goes on in this direction. Like this. With this sticking out. Nope. Goes in this direction this little pin sticking back and the fat one sticking out up top here for the actual fan. Okay, so let's take a look at this. And just kind of do a little test fit here. Yeah, that looks all right. Okay. So I'll put some glue here and on here. Lined up. Again, I'm trying not to touch the chrome very much. So that's how it's going to sit. Now our alternator is going to go right here. Okay. Just trying to make sure it is lined up. Yep. Okay. So I still don't want to touch the headers if I can, if I can prevent it. So I think it's going to be easiest if we do the alternator next rather than this belt. Actually, I don't think it's going to matter very much. This belt includes the pulley for the blower, which is going to go up here. It's going to sit on there like that. It's kind of unfortunate we have a pulley that's just kind of hanging in the air. <laughs> There's no bracket or anything for this pulley. It's just in the air. That's funny. 
Okay, so if we want our pulley to actually glue to this, we need to get rid of the chrome on the tip. Okay? Because like I said, when I was gluing on the blower, and getting the blower together, chrome prohibits the gluing of the parts. So I'm going to carefully scrape away just on the edge of this. So I can get rid of some chrome and the, let that fan belt actually stick to it. Let's turn that around. Let's do this down so I get a little bit more precision. need it 100% gone, I just need it enough that some glue has a chance to get into the plastic and actually, actually get on there. That's really all you need. Like I said, you don't need 100%, but there we go. Okay, so let's get, I want to glue on the actual fan belt itself. I want to put glue here and here. Right there. And right there. And line these up. Just a little bit. There we go. Fan belts on. They're upside down to you. Car spotted. Yes, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Car spotted. All right. So the fan belts on. Next is going to be the alternator. So, let's put that down there, and the alternator is number 88, and the alternator is chrome, so it's going to come off of one of these two trees. Um, it's not on this one, but our fan is, and we do need that after, so I might as well get the fan off of there. Paint or no paint? Uh, yes, paint. Definitely paint. Um, the kit is molded in white, and so you have to paint just about everything, unless you want to completely uh, white um, everything. So yeah, this has been, the engine's been painted. Uh, aside from the blower, um, I've painted the, the engine and the transmission aluminum, painted the fan belts, uh, the pulleys, and the headers. That's all been painted. Yep. Am I left-handed? Uh, yes, I am. <laughs> I am left-handed. Okay, now our fan is going to go in into that middle pulley, so I've got to try and get this chrome off of here a little bit. So just scrape on this tiny edge here. Glue will not stick if you don't get rid of the chrome, so that's why you got to scrape off where you're going to try and glue. So just on that very tip there, and I'll get this, kind of get in there, get the chrome off this tip here. There we go. There we go. Okay. Okay, that fan is ready to go. But we gotta get the alternator. 
And the alternator again, number 88, and that's this guy here. Okay, there's our alternator. Now our alternator has this hole. Fortunately, a lot of times in their chroming process, they can't get chrome into the holes. And that's a benefit in, to us here now. Now they don't really show, it looks like our bracket Come, see, there's actually a bracket attached to this, so I'm not sure exactly the orientation. It looks like it's supposed to go... It's really hard to tell how that's supposed to go. Oh, it goes on the back. See, I should have put the alternator on the belt first. Oh, you're also left-handed. Awesome. Part of the rare club. So now I've got to try and fit our, our alternator in behind here. So I'll do that. Oh, my timer's gone off, which means i got to go. But I will be back. So I'm going to... Put a little bit of glue on there. I'm going to use my thin glue. And then I've got to run off for a minute and then come back. Let's just put this back on, back where it belongs. There we go. Put some glue in there. And then rotate it where it's supposed to be. Like that. like that. Use a little more glue. There we go. Our alternator's on. Okay. And finally, we're going to put our fan belt in. So I'm just going to do a little test fit here. It just goes right there. So it looks like I can get away with shaving off a little more chrome on here on our shank or shaft, whatever you'd like to call it. Just to make sure. Not only that it's gonna glue, but if you get a bit too tight of a fit and it doesn't wanna go in all the way feels more of a positive. Oh no. There we go. <laughs> now we're nice and tight in there. See that difference? That's all the way. That's almost touching the, the pulleys. Okay. So now I just need to touch up a couple of spots on our fan belts where I didn't do that great a job. So I'm going to use Tamiya's XF1 flat black. You could use rubber black if you want to go with that. And you know what? I am going to do that. I'm going to use Tamiya's LP65. Uh, this is rubber black. So, yeah, fan belts are made of rubber, right? So that makes sense to use rubber black. Get my mixer going here. Okay. So, I'm gonna use my new use my new brush. Why not, right? Let's get my glue out of the way here. Okay, don't need the tire out anymore. And I'm gonna move this up a little bit. I'm actually gonna move this, and clean this out. Okay. Uh, 
Let's do some painting. Do some painting here. Don't need much, just a little bit. As you can see, it's not quite black, right? If you compare that to black, it's, well, actually, it looks just like the rubber. <laughs> here, let's compare it to this black, right? It's black is black. It's, um, black is black, yeah, but this stuff isn't quite black. Just touch up a little bit. You know, it's not really going to be seen very much. The top definitely will be. I think I saw in the kit there's actually a decal to go onto the top of the fan belt. here a little bit around the pulley. A nice little brush like this helps get into these tight little spots. pulleys on fan belts a little bit a little bit of a challenge where the pulley sticks out just that little hair and the belt's supposed to wrap around it there we go that looks better. I'm happy with that. Okay. Oh, got a spot that I missed here. Okay. Good on the back side. That looks good. All right. Although my belt does seem to be a little bit crooked. That's alright. There we go. Okay. Now, since black is pretty much the same color, I'm not going to bother cleaning my brush. I'm going to add some flat black to the tip of the exhaust. Where we drilled out the holes, right? Here and here. So... That should realistically be a flat black. So let's just get in there. And paint those. Just like that. And if you wanted, you could do just around the very tip. Kind of show like well maybe they didn't have the engine tuned quite right and you got some flame coming out and it's got a little bit of soot on the edge right anyway there we go just like that okay so now I gotta clean my brush is lacquer thinner I always use just lacquer, straight up lacquer thinner for Tamiya paints. This general hardware store lacquer thinner, that works. Works just fine for me. Do it enough time. 
times that when you wipe, it's just clean, thinner on the rag, and then you know your brush is clean, even though the brush might not look clean. I always get some discolored bristles. Eventually my bristles all look black. <laughs> Okay, that little touch-up's done. Okay. All right, now. With the engine done, I want to do another little test fit. I want to do another test fit before we move on, just to make sure I got the headers and everything in the right spot, and the right angles. Because this needs to sit down they have to go underneath like this, right? And it's going to sit like that. And so our headers look good. That looks good. I'm not going to bother putting our fuel line back on the back here again, this line that I broke off earlier, this one here. I'm not going to bother putting this back on until we're ready to put the engine in the chassis because then I can get it and actually run it underneath there. And that's that's what I want to focus on later. So right now, engine test fit looks good. Um, headers don't interfere with anything, so that's great. We're, we're looking good there. Okay. So next page. Let's flip the page and see what we're doing next. I believe we're working on the interior next. I'm going to start on that. engine finished yes we're starting with our seats okay we're gonna start putting our seats together we've got to paint our fire extinguisher that's on the roll cage we've got a gear shifter going in okay so let's grab our seats here uh, 14 and 15 I believe they are on their own little sprue right here Uh, I mentioned earlier this thing is molded in white. Um, the reason why it's all black is because I've already spray painted primer over everything. And the primer I use is Mr. Surfacer 1500 Black. So everything's primed. And as it so as it happens to be, I am painting everything in black. So that's good. So as you can see, as I clean up the nubs, it's white underneath there, right? Because this thing's originally molded in white. But we can always just touch that up, touch these up, just with some flat black, and get and clean up our little marks as we go along. In fact, on this one. I missed a little bit with the primer here, so I will be just spray painting it again with the primer. I believe in in the movie Fast and Furious, his seats are Recaro bucket seats, um, but of course in this kit they're just regular like Dodge Charger bucket seats. <laughs> 1970 Charger seats, that's all they are. I don't think Ravel went to any huge lengths in really changing their model kit that they already had just to make Dominic's Charger. I think the only thing they really changed was the chassis and obviously the engine. Okay, so this is gonna go in like that. So, we'll just hold that in place. Kind of like that. one.
around all the seams. And there's two. Okay, so those are done. Now, roll cage. The roll cage is next. They want us to detail up our, our fire extinguisher. And I kind of already started. Now, like I said, I took my Molotov chrome, that's this stuff here. Molotov chrome, liquid chrome. Okay, it's a liquid. And uh, just brushed it on and it comes out looking like chrome, like compared to chrome parts off the kit. It's really similar, right? Almost the same. Not quite, but almost, right? Really close. It's close enough, anyway. The fire extinguisher needs to be painted red, though. And so what I did is I started with a coat of white. Because I primed everything in black, red paint's not going to come out very good. So I started with a coat of white, and so I just need to do the red now. So for the red, I'm just going to use to me as XF7. Although it's flat, that's okay because I don't always paint a little clear coat on it, X22 clear, and that'll make the red nice and glossy like it should be. So I don't need my precision brush, so I'll just use this one while our seats dry. really helps the red come out and not be diminished. Okay, just one side. here. I kind of like the fact that, you know, the movie makers, they put a fire extinguisher in this car. A real race car is not really going to have a fire extinguisher in it. There we go. We've got our little red fire extinguisher. Now it's going to dry to a, a flat a flat red and not really shiny. But that's okay. Because we'll hit it with a clear coat after, once that dries. So I'll give that a few minutes to dry. To me, a paint doesn't take very long to dry at all. And that's one of the nice things about it. Unfortunately, if you are, do have to paint something, painting a, a fairly large piece with that's going to take some time, um, you'll, you'll find that the paint starts to dry on you um, and kind of gets clumped up. Okay, so I do want to touch these up on those two spots, but what I'm going to do is See if I can stick something in there. Maybe a toothpick. You got a toothpick here? I thought I had a toothpick lying around right here. Yeah, there's one. If I can get just kind of stick that in there like that, it gives me something to hold on to. That works. And then I can use this. And that way I don't spray my hands. You got another one here? Yes I do. Shove that in there. There we go. Okay. Now, like I said before, use Mr. Surfacer 1500 Black. That's what I use on this. And I'll just 
spray it over here. There we go. So now it's shiny. When it dries, it's going to be just as flat black as it was. So I'll just put the... I'll use this. Why not? Get in there. There you go. Sorry that's off camera. You don't get to watch paint dry now. <laughs> dry for a few minutes. The 1500's black, the Mr. Surfacer, he, that dries pretty quickly too. Okay, so now we can see our our fire extinguisher is no longer uh, glossy because the paint is dried. So I do want to make it shiny because it should be. Fire extinguishers are always painted with a, a gloss red. So Let's just make her shiny. Just for realism. If you start painting it too soon, you're gonna start actually taking the red off like I am here. So you clean up my brush a little bit and make sure I'm not doing too much. Okay, and that's what we're going to call done. See, nice and shiny. Okay, I'm going to call that done. Give that a minute to dry before we deal with that. Okay. So let's just put this aside here for now. I'm going to clean up my brush again. We've got a gear shifter, number 84. Looks like it's off the chrome tree. They do indicate in this kit um, the, with the chrome tree on the numbers of these. Because unlike, unlike an airplane kit or something like that, or a, a tank where you've got many, like six, seven different sprues, and they're, they're labeled A, B, C, and D. This is not, it's just numbers. So, but what they do for you here is this little star, and that lets you know this is off of the, one of the chrome trees. So you're not looking for only all the other trees for this particular part, you know what's on the chrome. There's only two chrome trees. So we're gonna look for 84, and I found it right away, it's this guy here. And it looks like, what a weird gear shifter. To do this. They want you to paint the boot flat black and then paint the handle gunmetal, which is a weird color choice for me. But, so what I'm going to do, rubber black, because the boot's made of rubber, they always are. So I'm going rubber black. Rubber black on the boot. And I'm gonna go rubber black on the handle too. looks like there is like some kind of a button on the top of the handle. 
I'm not a Dodge Charger um, specialist, so I don't know if there's a button on top of the gear shifter. Another thing I find interesting is I see this all the time, especially in movies and stuff like that. Um, the car clearly has an automatic transmission, and yet they'll have a manual gear shifter in the car so that in race scenes they can shift gears and make it cool, right? Even on the car's got an automatic. And that's another thing that I find funny about this car. This car's a drag race car. And everybody in drag racing knows that up until recently, on modern cars, that automatic transmissions were faster. Yes, automatics take more horsepower to, to run, but they shift a lot faster than you ever could in a manual transmission. <clears throat> okay, so we got our shifter. We're gonna grab our grab our floor pan here. This guy here. Okay. The shifter's gonna go right there. It looks like it's not a, just a circle, it's a, a D hole. <laughs> it's a D hole. <laughs> And that's a funny way to put it. It's a, a hole shaped like a, um, yeah, shaped like a D. Yes. Um, you want to make sure, I want to take the chrome off of our D peg. Get the chrome off your D. So it will fit in the D hole. It's important that your D fits in the hole. Okay, that's that's an important thing. Um, basically, if your D won't fit in the hole, then you've got a problem. Okay. direction does this go? It looks like it goes back like this. Just like that. So I'm just going to put some through there. Make sure that's all the way down. Doesn't seem to go all the way for some reason. Not quite. We've got a little bit of flash on the bottom here. Be careful in how I hold this in order to <laughs> challenge to get that flashing. It's basically a parting line between the two halves of the mold, making this not sit flush onto the floor. Nah, that's better. That's still not perfect. Stopping that from going all the way down. I'm gonna just clip this peg right off so I can scrape all the way across and make this flat like it's supposed to be. Much, much better. That also means I need to use this glue instead. And because I've been manipulating this thing so much, I'm gonna have to touch up my paint on the on the rubber boot. There we go. She's in place. Quite 
perfectly in place. There we go. There. Okay. Shifter's in. I'll have to touch up the paint on that in a little bit, but that's okay. So, looking at our floor pan here, we're now going to put in our seats. But we're going to start with our little brace that's got to go in the back here. I'm really kind of bewildered why the only roll cage in this car is just this bar. And that's it. There's no bars going to the back. There's no bars going forward. Like, literally a two-point roll cage? That is not realistic whatsoever. Like, at least have a four-point. At least have two bars going to the back. What is this little brace back here? Number 17. 17, right here. What does this thing do, even? This thing. Sorry, excuse for some bracing. Like, and this just goes on here. Like that. That's a roll bar. Like, so, <laughs> what? That cannot be. They can't expect you to think, yeah, that's realistic bracing in a real race car. There is no, not even any guide pins or anything to it. This is just ridiculous. I'll put it in, but it's really pathetic. Let's make sure it's centered. really like wow that's all I can say is wow that's uh, there's our there's our rear part of our roll cage guys that is so sad I think I want to fabricate something just because now with our actual roll bar that comes in the kit I want to try and touch this as little as possible. Okay. So the direction they want it going in is like this. I don't mind touching it at the top here. This is going to be right against the roof of the car, so that's okay. So if I lose some of my chrome on the top here, that's fine. So I am going to glue this down that in. I'll glue that on there. Okay. So, again, you got to be careful with this Molotov chrome because it is fragile and if you touch it too much, it does turn to silver on you. Also, at the same time, touching it at the top here, I'm okay with that because up and down as much as good as I can. If you actually have something that's good 90 degrees, maybe you could try that. Like, okay, I got my card here for the decals. Put that on there and make sure we're straight up and down as close as you can get. And let that set. that set without touching it. I don't want to play around with it too much. We'll grab our seats. Seat number one, seat number two. 
Now that extra coat of paint is actually kind of giving them a bit of a semi-gloss, which is kind of nice. That's a nice effect. Because this is totally flat, which is great. So our seats will go in like this. Careful. They're going to sit just like this. Okay. Just like that. So then now the question is, do I want my bars going back? Which I think would be good if I could get them to go back. And then what am I going to use for bars? I want to use a bar that's the same thickness as our actual roll bar. And if I could, I, if I can, I could actually use the chrome sprue. If I get a couple of bars, see, this one's a little too thick. So if I use this one, it's a little too thick, right? That's a bigger diameter if, to use that. That would be ideal because there's nothing on it. It's just straight chrome. But I really only need that length. So maybe something like this, right? Something off in the middle. Maybe this one across here. If I take my top, take my wheels off, or at least just do this. I'll have to take the bumper off of this one for my little test. Or maybe I won't. Let's do this and this. Okay, let's give this a test. How does this look in comparison? It looks close, but the chrome doesn't match. <laughs> and to try this up through here, it's going to be not quite long enough. I'm going to have this to deal with, but I could put this towards the inside or even down, and then you won't see it very much. Right? For example, if I trim this off here, it's a little bit too much to trim. Okay, I can clean this up a little bit here. Like that. Okay. And then all I gotta do is touch that up with the with the chrome. If I could, let's take our seat off here. If I can shove that up through here, like this, I could do that, like so, and that would work. That would give me something, and it would make it look more realistic, at least. Okay, now that's option one. Let me see if I can find another bar that's just as long as this. See, I, need, I only need it just a little long, just to go through and that's done. I don't need anything more than that. Um, that's a potential, that's a contender right there. Or if I look at my other chrome sprue. This is the same, and it's about, I can get this one here. And that bar actually looks nicer. There. This should be plenty of length. Yeah, see, I only need that long, right? To just get up to the top there. That's all I need. So all I need to do is now cut this on an angle that's going to work. So I want to get uh, try if you try a sharpie here. Does this work? Yep. there, which means 
And so I want this angle. This is just inside the car, so it doesn't have to be a perfect, perfect fit. I just need it to go there and be happy. Let's pull it down a little bit and get at that glue. stick very good at the back here but that's okay there we go we've got a bar there at least that's one side now can I find one that's better I think I can because this is the same here it's actually no it's not that's bigger this bar is bigger for some reason I would like to find one that doesn't have that blemish but not much I can do. So, but what we can do is clean up this blemish. Okay. Make this smooth on there. Make that smooth. Okay. Now, we want to have it facing down. That's going to be their best bet. And we'll run this through here. down as much as we can and we want to check our angle I actually don't like it. it's got a bit of a parting line that's going all the way along there so I'm going to fix that with my file line just kind of makes it a little bit hard to deal with. Unfortunately that gets rid of the chrome on it, but it's going to be on uh, facing down so that's fine. Let's get that shoved back in there. See that fits through there much nicer now. Okay, so our angle again Well, 
do this through here. Now, I don't know what the back end of this car is going to be like, if there's actually anything. I think I'm going to have to totally trim that out. What I want to do is actually get some CA glue and glue it in on that those brackets. Anyway, so there's our... We've got some somewhat realistic bars at least now. This is actually a four-point roll cage instead of just a two-point. Nobody would have only just that overhead bar. This isn't a, an AC Cobra, you know? And even the AC Cobra isn't just two-point bars. You know, so it's just unrealistic crap, really. So, CA glue. I want to check my time. I gotta check my time here. I think I'm running out of time. And I am. I've gotta get going. <laughs> I've gotta get going. So I'm gonna get some CA glue. I'm gonna put CA glue on the tips there and there so that this is they're really held in. Um, I don't need any more glue on the top because I had them trimmed off and that white glue. The Molotov chrome is not real chrome, so it's not going to block the fact. It's not going to stop it from gluing together properly. Okay. In the meantime, I'll get one of the seats in. I can get actually both seats in. Just kind of line them up. Right there. The weight of them kind of wants them to go forward, so just hold it down for a sec and it should hold. Like that. So that's that. We've got this part done. Next is going to be the dashboard, and we're going to have to take care of that next time. Okay? So for now, that's all we've got. We've got our interior done. Well, at least we got this part anyway. So that is where I'm going to leave it today, guys. Um, we're going to have to continue on next time, because I've kind of run out of time. And so, well, yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. And, uh, yeah, as you can see, a little bit of custom work, but it's not that hard to do. And uh, you can get away with fudging some chrome roll bar parts. And, uh, yeah, how that's going to look on the inside is yet to be seen. But we'll take care of that another time. I wanted to let you guys know about those uh, links that are down in the description box below. You're going to find links to my Twitch. You're going to find links to my Instagram. On my Instagram, you're going to see still pictures of everything I've built in the past. Um, tanks, planes, a couple of other cars, stuff like that. A um, couple of Star Wars things, Battlestar Galactica, all that stuff. And my hair is going crazy in the wind here. Um, anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching and thanks for coming out. Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you all in the next one.